did. And then I asked them to be on this panel, and for some reason or another, they actually say yes. And we have three of the top and workingest people in the business. And they're still working today. We have Michael Sorge. Lex Lang. And Sandy Fox. And we were supposed to have a couple more people on here, but uh, Neil Kaplan had a gig, so he had to bail out. And I will not tell an actor to turn down a paid gig. And Bree is somewhere around here, so we're gonna try and do this with three people, which is lower than we usually have. Yeah, this is the first time we've actually only had three people. I'll take care of the lady parts. That sounded wrong. Whoa! Hashtag me too! Oh, Bree Ambrosie in the house! <laughs> yeah, she did make it. She made a hell of an entrance, too. It's a touching reunion, isn't it? <laughs> and this is Arrow. He's our third performer of this panel. I love you. I know. He looks delicious. Can we put him in like a sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you heard that. Oh, oh boy. Actually, he's adjusting his temperature. Are you adjusting your temperature? You're cold? Oh. He wants that on his Are you Arrow? Are you the famous Arrow? He's the famous Arrow that All right. Ask questions, Jeff. Let's go. All right. So, usually I like to start this panel off by asking my panelists. Tell us some of the roles that you're most well known for that people in this room might know off the top of their heads. And then tell them something that would make their heads explode, which could be an obscure voice job, it could be an on-camera job, a looping job, a voice matching job, just anything that would blow people's minds if they found out it was you. Mikey, let's start with you. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, well, I did a lot of the voices on the Power Rangers, obviously. I was the voice of Squat. I was the voice of the Terrible Toad, the Krabby Cabby, the Rapping Pumpkin. Uh, I'll, I'll see a lot of voices on VR Troopers. I can't remember which voices I did. Maybe somebody out there knows and can help me, but I really don't know. Um, I also did, oh, someone who swapped out the one that doesn't. There you go. Uh, I was uh, the scenic cabbie in Curious George uh, in Scooby-Doo, Monsters Unleashed. I was the tour monster. And I was also the cotton candy glove. But the one that'll probably blow your mind that you don't know about is that when they did Kill Bill 2, there's a scene where after the wedding and everyone is killed, she is laying unconscious in the hospital. And they had me replace the voice of the guy there who tries to have his way with her. And then she bites his lip. You remember that scene? And so I got to say in a very soft tone, you've got a pretty mouth. That was me. Check, check. Well, hello. Check, check, check. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Okay. He likes to eat. We don't know why. All right. Enjoy. Hi. Um, I'm Lex Lang, and. Uh, I've been doing voice acting for about 22 and a half years now. 
I started on the Power Rangers. That was actually my first gig, was working as a Walla group member, which is like a loop group member on the on Power Ranger, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And then I went on to do the same thing with Zio. I think we met around that same time. Uh, and then from there it was uh, Power Rangers Turbo with Rygog and Larigo, and then Ecliptor and Power Rangers in Space, and uh, Zenaku and Wild Force. But uh, along the way, I've done hundreds and hundreds of different uh, characters, and um, let's see, I, I'm on Curious George as the doorman and his dog Hundley. The doorman talks like this, and let's go clean the lobby, George. And then uh, I've done lots of voice matching for people over the years. Uh, I was blessed enough this last few years to do Stormtroopers in the last three Star Wars movies. Woo! Star Wars fans out there, anybody? Um, and let's see, um, what else? And what do you sing? Do I do, I sing. Oh yeah, you may or may not know that in the last three Planet of the Apes movies, whenever you hear the primates, uh, I'm one of the four actors that you know, did all the primates for them. He likes to monkey around. Yes. <laughs> and what else? I guess that's about it. And you can, you know, IMDB and all that good stuff. And it's awesome to be here. Hi everybody! My name is Sandy Fox. I've been a voice actor for over 27 years. Uh, my role in the Power Rangers, well one, Power Rangers is how I met Lex, my husband. And uh, somebody was trying to fix me up with a guy that did voices on the Power Rangers. Yeah, and um, also I was in the Walla ADR group, so most likely I was a person screaming running from a monster. But you might know me as um, Sailor Chibi Moon and Black Lady in the Sailor Moon Crystal and Sailor Moon series. Um, I'm, the, I'm the voice of Betty Boop. Boop -de -doop -boop. And um, I do, I've done a lot of anime over the years, so I'm very blessed to be able to work with all these amazing people. And um, I'm so grateful to be here. Yay. Carol, you got anything to say, dude? He says that he has an Instagram account, and he talks for me there. Instagram! It's at Dr. Heisenberg. D-R-H-E-I-S-E-N-B-I-R-D. Heisenberg! Heisenberg? Okay. Thank you, Jeff, for doing this and organizing this. This is great. I don't know if anybody said that yet, because I was like, mm -hmm. Sorry. You're only just getting started. Yes! Good job! Yes! Yeah. My name's Free, Free Ambrosi, and I worked on Power Rangers since the beginning of it. Did it for a bit, like, lots, a lot of different voices. Well, I'm not done, dude! <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I did a lot of characters in this, and there was one where she burps. Can you burn for us? Yeah. <laughs> and um, thank you, Lex. Uh, uh, and I'm most no, I'm notable, Mr. Circuit. Uh, and my tortoise was in Power Rangers in Space. And also, Mr. Michael Sorage. Not only we do Digimon, but this dude is a mom. I'm not talking about your personal life. Yeah. When I was in the hospital in 96, I had a spine fusion surgery. This guy comes in with chicken soup. I was blown away. And he brought his daughter. It was like the best. I came all the way from, I think, Burbank to Century City to come visit. And it's just, I think it's the heart of these guys that I love the most. I wish we could be in the same room all the time doing our stuff, but just passing and stuff. Lex and Sandy. Super sweet. They're amazing. They're married. They're wonderful. Just, just, just positivity just goes ah like butterflies fly. Um, and then I did, I did a lot of Digimon stuff. So there you go. And this yes. guy speaks for me. What's your obscure voiceover job that no one would know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's oh, it's obscure. Uh, probably uh, pumpkin full of nonsense. Actually, my very first one. I played three characters and sang and. And they thought I was professional. And the only reason why I got that job is because um, moving around a lot, you make a lot of strange voices. 
because you're sort of friends with everything that moves in the house. <laughs> the and I'm enough. <laughs> this is what you do. So he always heard me doing these voices, and he calls me up and says, we're doing this audition, and they, they got rid of the girl who does this, and she can't, or whatever. You do all those voices, come on down and audition. That's what I did. And I left. I mean, oddly enough, that was the time I had 102 fever. I was so sick. Sometimes I think that's when we work our best. But um, I got called in the next day, sang, did all that, and it just started from there, and then, yeah. But I love these guys, like, there's nothing I wouldn't do for them. What? Oh, my voice match was, was Meg Ryan. Oh, nice. That's how I got the bird preference. Yes! Yes, the burping is. So we've been hired burp. to burp before, yes. I was hired to burp for Carrot Top in the movie, um, what was the movie we were in the boardroom? Uh, you know I mean? Was it her? Yeah. Um, okay. I shouldn't have brought this up without knowing what the hell it was called. Yeah, yeah. Courtney Thornton, Smith. Thornton Smith and Carrot Top were in a movie called Chairman of the Board. I don't know if you guys ever saw that. But at one point they're having this intimate moment and to prove her coolness, she burps the alphabet. <laughs> and that was me. When you're hearing her burp the alphabet, I had to drink like seven cans of soda. I'm telling you, I was like, the eighth can, I was like, ah. That was your yeah, obscure. It was very, yeah, no, my, my obscure was, yeah, I guess that is pretty obscure. Um, my other obscure was, I also played Dr. Cortex in the Crash Bandicoot games. Yes, yeah, Cortex, yeah. I want to say another thing amazing about Mr. Michael. We've done marathons together, and he trains, and we've raised money. Oh, I'm not, you can tell that story. He has a fun story yet, because you tell it way better than I do, and it's, it's absolutely true. We were running the LA Marathon, and at the start, there's 25,000 people, so it's easy to get separated from the people you're running with. So I'm running along with these two guys about mile 16, and all of a sudden, Bree shows up. And she's so excited to see me, she starts screaming. She's going, and all these guys thought that she was trying to attack me. And they all started running away from her and they're dispersing like there was a bomb about to go off or something. It was so crazy. But Priya and I have had some great times. Wasn't the comment about me wanting to shoot them in the head? Yeah. <laughs> you can't joke about them now. No, you can't joke about them now. Not in a marathon, no. No, no, this was back in It was before all those days, yeah. Or all that that nice. But I just have to say, he also trains other people. It's gonna be amazing. Well, thank you, man. I think you're amazing as well. Her boy voice is what she did, Tommy and, and Digimon. Do you guys remember hers? Tommy and Digimon? Fantastic. And Sandy is Chibi Yusa. Oh, I love that. I was I was fortunate to beat Grandpa Hino on that show. And, oh, yeah. and if, if you've ever seen that show, you know that the old, old Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon Crystal, so. Grandpa is, uh, he's, uh, he's definitely a ledge. Yeah. So they, they try to change the dialogue. You know, he's looking at girls, and uh, his, his eyes are going like this. Going, your, your clothes look very nice. <laughs> try to soften it, didn't work. Um, obscure uh, voice acting jobs, um, or jobs, I've had a couple. I did have an appearance on Muppets Tonight, and that was so exciting to work with Kermit the Frog. But, yay! So you, you'll have to YouTube that one. It's the, it's the Don Rickles episode. I play a cheerleader, the Raiderettes, in um, Grouper's Raiderettes. But another fun thing was my agent called me and said, I have this obscure re request for you. Did you used to be on a game show? And I won a game show called Whammy Press Your Luck. And the movie Bolt, when the little hamster is in the trailer flipping through the channels, he flips and stops on, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. And so they, I guess I sounded like a hamster and they wanted to use my, my voice footage for that movie Bolt. So I'm in the movie Bolt. <laughs> So the next question I usually like to ask my panelists is, what was your very first voiceover job and what was it like the first time you got to talk in front of a microphone? Mikey? Wow. That really actually goes back to when I was uh, in elementary school in Michigan. Because oh, my, my teacher heard me imitating the principal. The principal used to be on the intercom every morning. I used to imitate him. And so they found out, so they told the people in the office, they said, okay, 
tomorrow morning, you're going to do the announcements as the principal. I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? Just, so I had, it was all written down and stuff. And then, you know, so, so I did his voice as the principal. And then at the end, I thought, i got to add something. And to tell you how long ago this was, at the time, Walter Cronkite was still doing the news. So at the end, I went and I said, and now signing off, this is Walter Cronkite. Okay. I went back to the classroom and he said, where were you? And I said, I was on the school intercom. I was like, oh, no, really? And that was it. It's like kind of like chocolate cake. Once you get that first little taste of chocolate cake, man, you learn to like it fast. <laughs> so that was about it, I think. What was your first LA job? My first LA job. It would have to go back to, it was probably, I'm not, not credited on it, but I actually did the voice of Papa Smurf in the Smurf movie in 1986. It was the first movie where they came up with the brilliant idea of let's market it over Thanksgiving because all kids are off. And it went through the roof. It did like $6 million for Atlantic releasing. And they got it for like, I think, 400 grand or something. did it all non-union. I was the boy should pop a smoke. So that was really fun. Yes. Let's see, I think my first voiceover actual job happened before Power Rangers, even though I sort of credit Power Rangers as my first real work in LA. I was going to the Musicians Institute in Hollywood, California, it's called MI, and I was going to the Guitar Institute, so I was in a one-year program, and during that year I became the spokesman for the school. So anytime somebody would ask for more information on the school, they would send a videotape or a DVD or whatever to them with me as the spokesman, you know, saying, Hollywood, California, entertainment capital of the world. And here in the heart of Hollywood is the Musicians Institute. You know, and then that was like all live on camera. But then my first voiceover job was after they edited the whole thing, they brought me back to narrate over that. So that was my first experience and it was, it was pretty unique. And then after that, it was uh, Power Rangers. I had met Amy Jo Johnson while she was shooting, um, uh, what's that movie, Susie Q up in Canada. And she heard me doing some impersonations because part of my work is also doing sound-alikes for celebrities in different movies and things. Uh, at the time, I was doing a stand-up comedy routine that I had some impersonations in, and she said I'd make a great voice actor. And so she introduced me to Scott Page, who's over at the Power Rangers. We all owe our, a lot to Scotty. And um, the rest is history, yeah. Yay. We get the girl mic, the J-Lo mic. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see, um, I did a lot, I worked for Disney as an entertainer, so often they would ask me if I would do a Mickey or a Minnie for a parade or something like that, But and I used to do some stuff for Make-A-Wish for them, like talk to kids um, as some Disney characters, but my first real job when I got to LA, my first voiceover job was a White Castle hamburger commercial, and I was I was the I was a, a customer, and Lorenzo Music, the voice of Garfield, was in the commercial with me, and Marvin Kaplan. If anybody's ever seen um, Twin Peaks, and even before, he's an amazing character actor. So that was like my first session. I'd only been in LA like a week, and I walk in and. You know, hi, you Mr. Talent Man, and it was so much fun. Um, at the same time, I got cast in the very first three years of The Simpsons. Right as it was coming off the Tracy Allman show, I was in the Walla ADR group. So I would go in every week and I'd cover whatever they needed. Swedish women drowning. Hey, behave, hey, I'm drowning. Or if they needed, you know, snake whacking day. I mean, you just had to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> so snake whacking. Yeah, yeah. No, not a walk your snake, but but anyway, close. But anyway, it was just and that and that was that was when I first got into anime too. So it was exciting. Hello. He actually doesn't do voiceover. He actually was in a film. What's that thing called again, Devin? The film. Oh, a Killing Hasselhoff. He plays the bird that's being exchanged between me and one of the guys. And he's a film actor, he's not a, a film voice actor. actor. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what is that? But he likes commercials, and that is wrong. <laughs> Only good if you're in them, buddy. But um, my first job actually was the one I just spoke about. So can I tell you just a funny sure. story about something else? Yeah. It almost got me killed. I was on my honeymoon. This 
one here that I've been with for 31 years. God bless you, you're saint. Emperor Gavin, what's up with you? He's also your location guy on Power Rangers many seasons, so if you want to know where things were, he can tell you, no, that's not in whatever. It's really Woodland Hills. Does he but, eat fours? He, you know what, we should talk, because we've talked about that. But So my craziest thing, we're in Hawaii, we're on our honeymoon, we're in this one big group, we're checking out just everything. It's like an open lanai of grass, it's gorgeous. And there's like this foresty area, and then it must have been a couple football fields in there. We were, and of course I hear peacocks, peacock. And of course, this one is nose note, right? So I just went, and the lady that was with us went, sorry, I should have warned somebody. <laughs> what was funny is the lady that was doing the tour said, she had never done that. I'm like, why? She said, you just said, come here. And I'm like, well, stop it. And she wasn't kidding. Like, within a few seconds, he just, and it's these peacocks. I'm like, I have to kind of do it. Yeah, I on so much stuff. Kevin Seymour was the director and producer of many things at Magnitude 8, which was a, yeah. uh, a facility run by Les Claypool and his wife, Mary, who is also a great ADR writer. And, and Kevin Bob. was, he had such a love for anime. He was one of the people that brought so much product to the West and said, we want to dub this like professionally, not like you know, a lot of people, the only way they could get dubs was to buy fan dubs, and they were traded underground and before anime became what it is today. But he was really an important part of bringing anime to the West. Shows like Ghost in the Shell, Cowboy Bebop, what were some El of the Gundam, Mobile Suite 8, Mobile Suit 8. It's not easy to get a show from one place to another and get this studio, because there's so many studios, especially here, that are cutting, they saying, I can do it for this, 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 and this. He fought, fought, fought hard. He fought hard for that, for the actors. Um, unfortunately, the studio we had to record, it was, he would lose a lot of weight in there. But um, other than that, it was great. But he was awesome. He loved animals so much. He, he, I had a guy before him, a gray named Jetta, and he would always say, bring Jetta. Jetta just made him smile, and he would talk about his cats. And he is just a, just a, He's a friend. He's like a friend, then the director. Absolutely. He just, and he just the best. And unfortunately, Very he passed difficult away loss. about, has it been six yeah. years? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Big loss. Yeah. And on that note, no, what? That was killed. Because he wasn't afraid to direct and tell you really what he thought. Like, that sucked. And it, but it made sense because he was right. And then he's like, what happened? You could unsuck yourself. He would tell you the nuances, and you know, if you needed a line read, you could get it, but he kind of let you get there first. He, really, what are you doing? <laughs> anyway, um, he just, he, he's, he was a graceful guy. And on that note, let's go to a happier place. Yeah! And let's go to the fun part of the panel, where I get to make these people actually act, and show you what they do in the booth, and what they get paid to do normally. So today, we're going to do a script reading, and we're going to do an old Flash Gordon script from the 1930s. Nice. I'm going to announce that right now. This is what's called a cold reading. It means they haven't seen it, they haven't heard it, you're going to play it on the spot. <laughs> I think that's Flash Gordon, but that's later tonight. <laughs> TMI! 
So now let's announce who's playing what. Now we have to, yeah. Well, it's already written down on the first page. I always do that for everyone's convenience, but let me announce who's playing who. So I have to change around a couple things because we had a couple actors drop out, but first off, playing our, an playing our announcer and playing Hoon, Prince of the Lion Men, is Lex Lang. Yes, Moon, and you are the announcer. And next, playing our evil scientist, Dr. Zarkov, and Emperor Ming, our evil emperor, is Michael Sorich. And next, playing the roles of Dale Arden and... You know what? It would be funny if you talked to yourself, so I will bet you play Flash Gordon and Dale Ardenbury. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. So we'll see what happens when an actor has to talk to themselves, which happens a lot in prelay animation. And finally, oh! Arrow! Oh. Arrow! Yep. Look at you! Shut the doors. Shut the doors. Oh, that's why I'm supposed to oh, arrow. Wow. Street. He's very scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, crash landed. This is very different from our usual camp. Well, if anyone wants to do sound effects, they can. But now I have to hand Sandy her script because she is playing the roles of Princess Aura and our slave. Prince Aura slave? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way she said that, Lex. <laughs> Everyone is fun with the sleep. Just like Princess Leia. Yes, the monkey men is Walla, so everyone is the monkey men, and there's some soldier Walla throughout the script, so... Oh, he was just upset because he didn't get a He's button. not in the later part. <laughs> well, can Arrow do sound effects? I was going to do We can help you. Yeah, we can help you. Yeah, we'll help you. Sirens. We all do sound effects. You know what's crazy, though? I am dyslexic, so bear with me if I can. I'm seriously... We have until four. We'll be fine. Switch it up as much as we want, anytime. Yeah, Lex and Sandy have done this at Anime Expo. They did the Popeye script, and oh, they did insane, so crazy things with it. Lex was our Popeye, and he would change the voices to celebrity impressions. Great. <laughs> like some of the voices you did, you did Christopher Walken. You yeah. did Owen Wilson as Popeye. Chris Tucker. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. So we'll give them just a little bit of time to mark up their scripts. That was in case I could get other people to join in. I was gonna be canned already. I haven't even done it. I don't need the role. No, I meant for <laughs> Jeffrey. I'm out of here. He does this to me all the time. I do. But actually, you know what? We could bring in another actor to play in Flash Gordon. Is there a Daryl Delphin in here? Yes. Daryl Delphin, get on up here. You've been a fan of this panel enough, so you're going to play. <laughs> Flash Gordon. We'll ease it up for you, Bree. We joked about this yesterday. I was not actually. You don't have to play Flash anymore if you don't want to. Oh, I don't want to, but dude, feel free. Which one would you like me to play? You play Dale. I want to play Dale. So, what am I doing? You're Flash Gordon. You're the lead. It all hinges on you, Daryl. Oh, no. Yeah, you messed up. You're dead. And she will, too. I don't like death. You'll become bird food. It is bad for you. I was worried I could get other people. No, those were just alternate actors if okay. I could get on this. <clears throat> but if not, then people had to double. Cool. Are we all sufficiently marked yes. up? No, you just called me! <laughs> <laughs> it's called cold reading for a reason, Daryl. Wow. It, it is very cold in here. You'll have it in a flash. Oh. 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 This is why I brought Mikey on. He brings the laughs. I bring the laughs. 
He does. By the way, one of these characters is supposed to have a German accent. I hope I won't offend any of you. Because <laughs> <laughs> now we have to be very politically correct. Oh, stop it. Well, Only a quarter of me will be offended. Tell us about all the times you played Fidel Castro on TV. Pongo la cara fuerte, por favor, señor. Yo soy Fidel Castro en películas, televisión. Seinfeld, Married with Children, Elian González Story, Noriega, God's Favorite. All of these I played Fidel. And I'm not very proud of it because obviously he's a despot, but you know, I tried to bring the laughs as Fidel. <laughs> well done, El Presidente. El Jefe, you. <laughs> no, I'm El Jefe. You're El Jefe. Fair enough. <laughs> How often is he done? He's good. He's ready. All right, Lex, why don't you start us off? Seriously? Okay, we'll give him another second. Do we need a little theme music in the background? No. Yes. No? Put the song the queen song. Let's light a lot of queen. Yes. Well, we will flash you. Flash you. We will, we will flash you. Let's see, who's the narrow? Okay, I know a good narrator. Presenting for the first time on radio, the amazing interplanetary adventures of Flash Gordon and Dale Arden. Music. That's the music. <laughs> These thrilling adventures come to you as depicted each Sunday in the Comic Weekly, the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure. The Comic Weekly, now printed in 32 tabloid-sized pages. Each page in full four colors is distributed everywhere as part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Racing high above the earth, comfortably seated in a giant airliner. Flash Gordon, internationally famous athlete, looking avidly across the aisle from Dale Arden. A lovely young companion of his air voyage. The minds are both intent on the terrible destruction from which many months have been approaching the Earth with terrific speed. The new planet hurtling through space directly in the path of Earth, suddenly there's a violent jar. <laughs> Hi, it's Nicholas Cage here. The plane lurches into a spinning nose dive. Flash Gordon's trained muscles carry him across the aisle to the frightened girl to gather her arms and heads and then leap free of the falling plane. And pulling the ripcord, he glides to Earth! Pull over. Don't be frightened, Dale. The plane has crashed. We're safe. Yes, thanks to you. I'm oh, sorry. Hold fast. We're landing now. Careful. Easy. One, two, three. Crash. Crash. <laughs> Are you all right, Dale? I haven't either. It's a crazy pass. Do whatever you want. Thank you. Anytime, Rian. What? Flash. Oh, Dale. Oh, Dale. Oh, look. Oh, look. Flash. There's a large steel door. It's closing. Huh. Well, uh, why? That's the laboratory uh, of the great scientist, Dr. Hans Zarkov. He's coming this way. I'll call him to help us. I hope you pardon us for breaking in on you so unceremoniously, doctor. But you see, we had to bail out. Yeah, yeah! Had to bail out, are you shrine puppy? Ha ha! I see you for what you all are! Spice! That's right! No collusion! Come to steal my secrets, haven't you? Well, well, ha <laughs> ha, I have an answer for that. Come with me, ha <laughs> ha. Put the gun away, Dr. Zarkov. The man is mad, Dale. We have to humor him. All right, Professor, all right. We'll come with you. 
Get down this ladder. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to Oakland. Into the tower. The tower of power. Ha-ha! <laughs> yeah. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down, I tell you. We'll take the... We'll escape somewhere. There now. Now we are in my rocket ship, yeah? But in ten seconds, we will be on our way to a new planet, yeah? A whole new world! A new exciting place to be! And, and we will go in without landing! We will all die! We will die for science! <laughs> is mad. The rocket ship is breaking away from the Earth with the speed of light right into the path of the new planet. You get you a little enthusiasm. Hold tight, Dale. We'll escape somewhere. To the new planet. <laughs> the new planet. <laughs> Did I mention the new planet? <laughs> the three of us, we will save the Earth. <laughs> Dr. Zarkov, we still have time to swing your rocket ship out of the path of the... What did you say? It was a new planet? <laughs> no! Shh! No! Shh! <laughs> huh. Well, <laughs> what will you gain for science if we're all killed in the crash? I know who you are, Mr. Flash Gordon. It's the world's greatest athlete! Yeah! Even Jesse Owens could... Okay, maybe he could beat you. But you are trained. You have the train strength. But today, your train strength will not save you. Only my mind. The mind of Zarkov. The scientist can save you. Can save any human soul upon the Earth. The turbo drive. Ah! Your mother. Your father. Your mother. Where the F? Okay. Um. He's racing for the controls. You can stand aside, Dr. Zarkov. <laughs> Feel it, yeah. The gravitational pull of the planet. Just like me, now that I'm over 50, I can feel the gravitational pull on parts of my body. We'll crash in five seconds. <laughs> the rocket ship hits the planet. Dr. Zarkov and Dale are thrown from the rocket ship unconscious. Flash is thrown clear of the wreckage and lands on his feet, uninjured. He rushes to the side of the unconscious girl, picks her up, and starts to carry her toward the distant towers of... He makes out with her! He makes out with her for just a couple of seconds. And then, suddenly, <laughs> strange soldiers, arms with ray guns, appear, and one of their flies is down. But he zipped it back up, and now capture, they're capturing Dale and Flash. They force them to come to them and, and to the throne room of Ming in the Merciless... Oh. Back it up when you do <laughs> To the throne room of Ming the Merciless, Emperor of Mongo and Supreme Ruler of the Universe, and he owns a Starbucks. <laughs> oh, thou indulgent Ming, most merciless majesty of Mongo, Supreme Ruler of all peoples of the new planet, thy slaves salute thee. Being saluted by slaves, that's good, that's damn good. Ming shall want the Earth people, yes. Thy slaves obey, oh Ming the Merciless, oh. Yeah, change the voice. Get your hands off me, I'm no slave. I'll meet your emperor as a free man and as an equal. So, Earthman, you are a free man and my equal. My name is Bernie Sanders. Please, throw him to the red monkey men in the arena. I don't think it's wrong for him to be with the red monkey men. They're good people. They're from Vermont. And I would be forcing you to make this free man my equal, because I believe everyone should be equal, and school should be paid for for free. There is thy freedom, Earthman, and free universal Care and education. Now you go into the arena to meet the red monkey men of Mongoid. No! <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry, dear. 
Emperor Ming, I will show you that I, as a free man with health care from the earth, <laughs> are more than a match for your brainless red monkey man. Flash reaches the bottom step leading to the arena. He checks his iPhone and looks at his Facebook. He leaps and swings to the nearest red monkey man. Then grasping the fallen man beast under the armpit, he notices that he hasn't used deodorant. Okay, well, Flash whirls him around in a flail, knocking the others in all directions. Emperor Ming, fearing his monkey men will all be killed, orders his soldiers to destroy Flash and their ray guns, and also to like their posts. In the midst of the confusion, Princess Aura, the beautiful young daughter of Emperor Ming, calls to Flash. Uh, quick, brave Earthman, this way! Here, come over to my balcony. Flash leaps to the royal balcony, but splits his pants in the process. <laughs> and joins the gorgeously jeweled princess. Speaking of his family jewels, they were exposed. <laughs> Who commands the slaves back while she takes Flash through a secret door and into a passage leading into a private elevator, where he farts alone. The two get in and Aura closes the door and presses the switch. Who? Um, <laughs> who are you, beautiful maiden? Don't look at me, please. <laughs> I am Princess Aura. Aura. The only daughter of Ming the Merciless. <laughs> oh, beautiful voice, Princess. Princess, I owe you my life. You are so brave and handsome and strong and... You must not end your life so young. I have never seen anyone like you, Earthman. Especially all those extra parts. <laughs> oh, that's right. I should probably still be covering that. Uh, where I come from, Princess, uh, there are many stronger men and better looking. Oh, sort of, kind of, not really. <clears throat> but tell me, Princess, where are you taking me? I am taking you to the private landing frame of my own personal rocket car. Personal rocket there car. you will be safe. And then I will bathe you in olive oil and lots of yummy spices. If I weren't married and you weren't married, I would so kiss you right now. <laughs> we have arrived, Earthman. <laughs> Get in this rocket car. No one can harm you here, except oh. me. <laughs> oh, except you. Wait, what do you imply? Uh, no. Oh, I, uh, prom but, but, I promise it won't hurt. But, but Princess, Just a I, little, just a little. I, 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 I don't, um... Hurry! Hurry! Oh, hurry! But Princess Aura, how am I going to rescue the Earth Girl, Dale Arden? That is why you are here in my private rocket car, Earth It's still a little rocket car. I love yes. it. <laughs> Dale Arden can never be rescued by you. B Princess, I... As for you, Earthman, you shall love me or die. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Meanwhile, back in the palace, Emperor Ming is checking his Facebook again. <laughs> no, and he's also talking with Dale Arden. Ha! Money! Your companion, Flash Gordon, has escaped! Ha ha ha! But not for too long! Don't worry about the time-space continuum, Marty! Uh, my men will shoot and capture him! Never! I don't love you. Am I the right age? No, you're good. Stop! <laughs> oh. oh, she jumped, she jumped a little. Okay, yes. You are pleasing to me, Earthwoman. Ah, oh, yes. You will become my wife. Yes. I already said it, so I don't need to say it again. Say it again. Hurt me more. Hurt me. Say it. I need to hear it from your own lips. Come over here and make me my wife. Oh, we men of Mongo have no human traits. We don't fraud. We don't embarrass ourselves publicly. We don't use public transportation. No love, no mercy, no kindness for girls like you. Oh, whether you love me or not makes no difference. You shall become my wife as soon as the ceremony can be arranged. Your Majesty, look into the spatiograph. 
our city is being bombarded by the space heroes. You know how to make those, don't you? Shoot, I'm a Greek. <laughs> of the Lion Men. Ah, the Lion Men. Order this entire space fleet <laughs> to attack. <laughs> I'm nervous. In the terrific battle which takes place between Emperor Ming's space fleet and the heroes of the Lion Men, the attacking gyros are driven off. Oh dear, the rocket ship in which Flash Gordon has been held captive is destroyed. Oh, I think I just pooped. And Flash is thrown to the ground unconsciously. He opens his eyes to find himself staring at the great bearded face of Thune, Prince of the Lion Men. He looks a lot like Shatner, though. <laughs> Thune lets his great sword fall as he sees Flash Gordon's white skin. This, this is not white. I... I can't believe they described you as white. Who <laughs> art thou, white skinny youth? Speak. Answer before I cleave thy white body in pieces. Art thou a new kind of soldier of the Ming Merciless? Is your definition of white, like, different from birth? A any, we're not gonna get into this. I am the sworn enemy of that fiend emperor, Ming of Mongo. He has captured a girl who is from Earth, like myself. Where Earth is white, it means white. I live only to rescue her. And Earth man. You say? Yes? And the enemy of Ming Merciless. That, that's right. Tell me, are you friend or uh, enemy? I am Thun, Prince of the Lion Men, hereditary enemies of the men of Mongo. If thou would accept me as your friend, Earthman, I will gladly join thee against Ming the Merciless. Here's my hand on it then, Prince Thune. Wow, you put your hand on your chest. It's crazy. What's thy name, Earth Man? I am called Flash Gordon. I have to say it like that because it, you know, affects. Oh. Uh, <laughs> upon the earth, your highness. Wow, it's crazy. You got a flash on your shirt, and yet. You name yourself Flash. You call me Thune, friend. I will call thee Flash. Friend Thune, do you know how we can gain admittance to the palace that we may rescue Dale Lorden? Come. I will show you a secret way to the palace. No, no, zip your pants. It's this way. I love secrets. Oh, sorry. Mm. Ah. Good. Chatner takes back over. Uh, the Emperor Ming is away pursuing my hero fleet. We may be able to rescue the Earth Girl before Ming's return. Oh, natural woman. <laughs> <laughs> Flash Gordon and his powerful newfound friend go first to the space gyro of Prince Thune, and there they, are ga they gaze intently into the thought projector, in which they not only see Dale Arden captive, but she's dressed in some unfamiliar undergarments. They also reveal to him a secret way leading to the throne room of the palace, where there seems to be a 7-Eleven, a Starbucks, and a vape store. The secret passage is known as the Tunnel of Terror because Mikey Sarich has had some chili and has been in there earlier. The deadly beast which lie within its gloomy walls. Fighting each step of the way, Flash and his new friend Prince Thune finally find themselves within the palace. A door with a great steel bolt stands before them. Oh my god. Quick Thune, this door must lead directly to the center of the palace. Why yes, hello there. From my memory of the palace, I should say that beyond this door is the great throne room of Emperor Ming. Jeez, I'll show a little more enthusiasm. All right then, here we go! Oh, you were right. 
right? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a, it's a great statue before us, and the God of Death, which stands at the top of the steps directly behind the throne is of the Emperor. Yeah, I would never do that. You're, you're my compadre. I, I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Uh, listen, Dune, what's that? Yeah, you know, by the great god Poo'u, it's the royal wedding procession. Yeah, Ming the Merciless is taking another bride. Live long Ming the Merciless! Live long Ming the Merciless! Live long Ming the Merciless! He's coming up the altar steps! I'm gonna look around the idol. Uh, look around the idol as much as you need. Come back, wait, come back, Flash! <laughs> wait, what? Loon, uh, save yourself! I'm gonna rescue the Earth's friend, Dale Arden! I have to say it like that. She's being forced into a marriage with Ming the Merciless! What? Prince Loon of the Lion Man does not save himself at the expense of his friends! If thou must die, <laughs> Where are you going with Dale? We're ready for you. We need shout. We need shouts from the crowd. Halt! 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 Hey, what the hell happened with Dale? Where'd she go? And where's my snarfblad? Go! Go, gods! After them! Dale, this way! Down this passage, Earthling. As fast as thou canst run. Quick, I mean, get over here. You should really get something for your throat. Your voice keeps changing. They're swarming up all the altar steps. Help me topple the idol over them now. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> With, ay, ay, ay. <laughs> with a grinding crash, the giant idol topples over the out onrushing soldiers of Ming the Merciless, killing those in front and throwing into confusion the whole company. Flash Gordon and Prince Thune, and with Dale between them, dash into the secret passageway beneath the idol. The way becomes steeper. They slip and fall. Down, 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 a hundred feet or more into the whirling underground river. along a raging current which falls over into a lake. With the powerful strokes of a champion swimmer, Flash sets out for the shore, towing Dale by the hair. Ooh. They reach the shore, and Flash reaches down into his trousers to grab his cell phone to check his Facebook. Then he grabs Dale again and drags her to safety. She screams and disappears between the calm surface, the calm surface of the lake clutched by two powerful green scaly arms. With no thought of his own safety, Flash Gordon dives to Dale's rescue and finds an adventure. <laughs> and finds an, advent an adventure stranger than any which he has ever gone before. We will, we will flash you, flash you. Follow the thrilling adventures of Flash Gordon and Dale Arden each Sunday in your Hearst Sunday newspaper. You will find them graphically portrayed in full-color pictures in the Comic Weekly. Only the Comic Weekly can follow. You can only in the Comic Weekly can you follow the escapades of the Cat and Jammer Kids with those perennial rascals, or thrill to the adventures of the King of the Royal Mounted. You'll see him mount that horse more than one way. <laughs> Only in the Comic Weekly can you enjoy the good, clean fun of bringing up father, Tilly the Toilier. <laughs> Wait, way out west. Tilly the Toilier. Uh, the Little King, or the Big King, or the Medium-Sized King, or the somewhat large but not considered entirely large King. What about Elvis? And uh, 
Your little friend Skippy and all his pals are waiting for you to come. That's like King Crosby or somebody. <laughs> Along with Pinky, Molly, and Pat to the Great Adventure. And there will be Ace Drummond, the Demon Aviator, Johnny Round the World, and many, many others. Be sure you get this 32-page all-color comic weekly supplement with your copy of next Sunday's Hearst newspaper. And don't fail again to listen next week for the continuation of the amazing interplanetary adventures of... Flash Gordon and Dale Arden! Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, and that was Flash Gordon improvised and all that. Seriously, who cast this crap? I got the tiny sports! <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you on a bigger part next time, Bruce. Next time, next time. Anyway, that's all the time. Thank, Thank you. That's why I brought him on. So this is the kind of stuff you can expect in the booth. And thank you guys for coming out today. And also, if you want to say hi outside, whatever, we're going to go back to our tables for a little bit. We're in like the row 900, so feel free to come by and say hi and, you know, check us out. And, and let's give Jeff Burns a big Jeff hand. Jeff Burns a big hand for bringing this to Power Morphicon. Yeah. Thank you all for coming yeah. out to Chilling with Voice Actors and join me in thanking Bree Brosey, Sandy Fox, Lex Lang, Michael Sorge, and Daryl Delphin in joining. And we hope to see you next time. Thank you! And for anyone that's about to leave, I actually have a panel right here in like a couple minutes, actually. Seconds. Seconds or whatever. Called Our Powerful Fandom, so if you want to stay here and meet Bruno Mia, 